Hi everybody. So, rocket stoves. <laughs> rocket stoves seem to have this enormous amount of mystique with people telling you all kinds of things right, left and centre. Now, however, a rocket stove at its heart is astonishingly simple. Now, for years, and I mean centuries, if not millennia, our main method of lighting was to put some wax in a bowl and set it alight. And that little flickering flame was what we used until about 1780, when a chap came along called Argand and said, hang on a sec, what happens if we put a glass tube on that? And he created the Argand lamp. Now, this is an example of the Argand lamp. It looks a bit like a safety lamp. A safety lamp is the David lamp with the gauze on it. This is just a lamp with a glass tube on it. Got some holes in the bottom right here. When you put a glass tube on, it turns out that the airflow is improved. So it only flows in one di direction because it's heating going up. We get a flow, a draft going through there that pulls more air in. And so we get a better airflow. Because we've got a better airflow, we get more complete combustion. And because the gases are held in this space, there's only one place for them to be and they burn there. And so we get this massive improvement. Now, a rocket stove is exactly the same kind of thing. It's basically just putting a tube above the fire. Now, wood fires are around about 15% efficient, which is just rubbish if you think about it. The main reason they're 15% efficient, in fact, just about the only reason, is because wood doesn't just burn. Wood goes through a series of processes as it burns. The first thing happens around about 100 degrees centigrade or so, it dehydrates. All the water is driven off. It burns around about 600 degrees centigrade. But before it gets there, at about 200 to 300 degrees centigrade, it starts giving off gases. Those gases are the volatile organic content and the breakdown of the matter contained in the wood. You've got to remember, wood was a living creature. It made stuff like alcohol and sugar and methanol. All of those things are still in the wood when you cut the tree down. When you heat them to 200 or 300 degrees centigrade, they all come off. And when they come off, they will burn. But of course, in an open fire, what happens is they come off and the wind blows them away. So the heat you're getting is just from the burning of the wood. And so it's only about 15% efficient, which is just terrible. And somebody thought, hey, Let's stick a tube over there and capture all those gases and burn those too. And that efficiency shot up. Your average efficiency for an ordinary wood stove that you might buy from a store is around about 70 or 80% efficient. Because instead of letting the wind blow it all away, you've got it in a box. Essentially, an argand lamp is a light in a tube and a rocket stove is a fire in a box. Keeping everything there in one place means that it can burn, and it burns on average somewhere around about 600 to 900 degrees centigrade, although it can burn up to 1200 degrees centigrade. Now, the development of the rocket stove is mostly put down to Larry Wineski. I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right or not, but we'll give it a go. And he was technical director of Aproveco. Aproveco began development of the uh, rocket stove in about 1980. It was based on a design called the Vita stove. The Vita stove was literally a collar of steel around the fire. You put the pan into the stove, and because the hot gases were now forced to lick around the pan instead of being blown away, it was very much more efficient. And he worked on that to develop that system, and he reckoned it was based on the Roman hypercost system. The Roman hypercost system basically set a fire at the entrance, the wind blew it up through the holes in your walls, and it warmed up your walls. It was a, a primitive mass heater. Instead of direct heating, the walls got hot because of the hot gases being blown through them and they radiated heat into the room. And he reckons that's where he got the inspiration from and that was the basis of the rocket stove. And if you look at a simple rocket stove, which is just a J-tube, then you'll see that those processes of gasification that we talked about are going on in that stick of wood. So you put a stick of wood into a J-shape, there's an air underneath that stick, the wood begins to burn, the gases are given off, and then blown up a long chimney. That long chimney contains the gases in the same way that the argand lamp shroud did. Those gases ignite at around six or 700 degrees centigrade, and now they've only got one way to go, and that is up. 
and if you stick a pan on top of there, that pan's going to get hot. Now traditionally, those kind of uh, rocket stoves had insulation around the top part of the J. They had insulation down the top part of the J because the only place you wanted that heat to go was up and out onto the pan and that is uh, where the rocket stove gets its efficiency from. The rocket stove gets its efficiency because you're not allowing the gases to blow away before they can burn. But they're basically so simple you have to ask yourself the question why is it there's so much complexity around it? Well, there's a number of reasons for that actually. People love them, I, I certainly do. Uh, people want to investigate them and take that efficiency from 85% plus, why not, it's valuable research. Sometimes people have just an idea in their head which is completely and utterly wrong but they're going to defend it hella high water and you can understand that one too. And sometimes people just like to take things to the extreme because why wouldn't you want a roaring flame? Roaring flames are just awesome! The problem with it is it does create a little bit of confusion because people build things for different reasons. Take the mass heater for instance. It's sometimes said the mass heater is better. Uh, it depends. A mass heater doesn't create more energy, it doesn't more efficient. All a mass heater does is shifts the time. Take the Economy 7 heater for example. The Economy 7 heater was a brick filled radiator with an electric element at the bottom. Overnight when the electricity was cheaper it would heat those bricks up. During the day when it was more expensive you turned it off. And that heat would then gently radiate out. So it was cheaper because you were heating it with cheap electricity but you still used the same amount of power. The difference was, it didn't heat your room, it heated the bricks. So there was no heat coming out into your room, it was all going into the bricks. And the bricks would then radiate out the heat, and it's the same thing with the rocket stove mass heater. When you light that fire, it heats the mass, not the room. When the fire goes out, that mass will radiate the heat. There's no energy being created, there's no saving there, all that's happening is the time is shifting. Because when you light the fire in that mass of the rocket heater, you won't feel that heat. Because it's got to heat the mass first, and it'll do that. So say it takes a couple of hours to heat up that mass, then after a couple of hours, you'll feel the heat, and the heat will last a couple of hours longer, and then you'd need to relight the fire. If you want instant heat, don't make a mass heater. You won't get any more heat or any less heat, it will just be instant and then of course when the fire goes out it'll stop. With the mass heater you have to wait until the mass warms up before you get the heat. So a mass heater doesn't provide any more efficiency or any more power, it just changes the time and of course the reasons you want to do that, there's plenty of times you'd want the heat on in the evening when you don't have to tend a fire and there are plenty of times when you don't want that, when you come in and it's cold and you want the heat straight away. It's just a choice, one is not better than the other. The same is true about the rate at which you burn it. If you burn your material very quickly and fiercely, you get a mighty flame. It doesn't last as long. You're going to be stoking it every couple of minutes if you have a roaring flame. If you've got a fire, the chances are you just want to stoke it every now and then and have it burn gently. Because the heat it gives out will be the same. What people tend to forget is that energy and power are two different things. Energy is a fixed amount and there's an amount of energy in that lump of wood that you get out as heat, usually as BTUs, when you burn it. If you burn it quickly, you get the same BTUs out, you just get them out quicker and so you get more power because the shorter the time you apply energy, the more power it has. It'll burn ferociously, but for a very short time. If you burn it slowly, you'll get the same heat out just over a longer period of time. Insulation is another example. Insulation was there because you wanted the heat to go one way, up the chimney to hit the bottom of the pan. You didn't want it radiating out. With a heater, you don't want it to go up the chimney. You want it to radiate out. And another one is you want it to burn as hot as possible because it's the most efficient. Now that one actually probably is true. If you lose efficiency, of course, you pay for that in cost of fuel because you're going to have to burn a little extra fuel in order to 
make up for that loss of efficiency. But a little bit of balance is needed here because these things can get up to 1200 degrees and if you insulate them and you get a rocket going out there and a fierce flame, you're going to be making a forge as opposed to a rocket stove and it is going to burn at that temperature. But do you want it to? Because if you're burning something at a temperature, of course, what happens is you have to use thicker, heavier, more exotic materials in order to cope with temperatures like that and so your construction cost is going to go up and your lifetime of your stove is going to go down and you're going to pay for that. So it really becomes a balanced question about what you want to pay for. A little more fuel or a little more on the stove and it's a question of balance for that one. In Roaring Flames look good on a YouTube video and they're certainly impressive but not a lot of use if it's going to melt your equipment into slag in the matter of a few hours. Now, I think that the name Rocket Stove came because of the distinctive roar that the flame makes, but personally I believe it's just a bit of marketing advertising because saying Rocket Stove makes it sound so much more impressive than stove that burns slightly better than before, and that's how I think it got its name. But it's like so much else that we talk about and so much else that we do. When you listen to what people are doing with their rocket stoves, you have to listen with circumspection because they're building their stove for their reasons and you may have a different set of reasons. Now, my reasons are to build a stove that is reasonably efficient, that can be made from easily obtainable materials from just about anybody who can do it. And that's what I'm aiming for. When I aim for something like that, of course I come up with a particular design that will not fulfil everybody's needs. But I always fall back on basic principles, and the basic principles of a rocket stove are stunningly simple. It's a tube to contain the pyrolysis gas to give that gas a chance to burn before the wind blows it away. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.